Okay, so some uh, linear programming problems or some optimization problems can be formulated as network flow uh, models and th this is an introduction to those network flow models. So uh, in network flow models we create uh, uh, models, we can uh, plot uh, models using what we call nodes and arcs and a node is just a place or a, a circle or sometimes we use, di use different shapes that uh, has some kind of name or symbol. In this case, I will be use the symbol I, sometimes J. Uh, sometimes we will use uh, values of the symbol, uh, these symbols as uh, numbers or sometimes letters. And in addition to, to the, the, the name, the ID of this node, the I, we will have a, 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 a number next to it, BI. Here you see it uh, written, BI. And the, uh, Depending on the value of this number, the node may have a different interpretation. So the node might be a sync node, uh, which means it has some kind of demand of BI units. So for example, this is the, the example, uh, 150 units of some product are needed here. And uh, we have, we might have a source node, which, right, which has a supply. And for this, we'll use a negative value. So whenever we write like minus 100 next to a node, we'll mean this node has a demand of minus 100, which means effectively it has a supply of 100. So if it's the number is negative, it means it's a negative, uh, it's a supply. And to know the supply, you have to drop the minus, right? Cancel the minus with another minus. Uh, so this is a supply of 100 units. Now, when the value is zero, it means there is neither demand nor supply, nor supply. And uh, often uh, when there are zeros, we omit them basically assuming zeros do not have to be written. That uh, reduces clutter. And uh, in this case, uh, a node is a transshipment node. And as you can see, um, in, in actually, um, in, in those uh, network flow problems, we will be assuming there is a single product we're transporting, just multiple units of this product, whatever it is, whether it will be uh, some liquids or whether it will be some units of a product, uh, like cars, and uh, there could be many other things. Now, one note here is that actually we call this node with uh, uh, zero supply demand transshipment, but in fact, all nodes here are transshipment nodes. What I mean by this is that just because you have 150 units of demand in a node doesn't mean you're not allowed to, to ship more to it or actually ship through. So, for example, we could have a shipment of much more units into node 1, like well, let's say 200 units, 150 could stay here to satisfy the demand, but uh, the remaining 50 could be taken further to other nodes. So in a sense, every node can serve as a transshipment node, at least in some network flow models. So this is node. And the second part, how do we ship things between nodes? Well, we, we use arcs. Arcs represent some kind of connections on the network. And there is more parameters here. So in order to know the arc, we need to know from which node it connects to which node. And we need to know um, the cost of the, the, the shipment. So CIJ is a cost per unit, unit of flow, right? So let's say if I s transport cars here, I will have a cost per car transported from one node to another. And again, if we omit it, uh, that means the cost is zero. And uh, if we also might have sometimes uh, lower and upper bounds on flows, which means what's the minimum amount I have to ship and what's the maximum amount I am allowed to ship on this connection. So if we omit them again, the meaning here is lower bound is zero, but here is an exception, an upper bound is infinity. If it is omitted, if it's not given, then we mean there is no upper bound effectively. So here we have a, a very small example of a network flow model. So here we have uh, one node, which is a supply of 200 units. And uh, there are costs here, $13 um, dollars or 13 cost units for every unit shipped here, 12 for every unit shipped here. Um, there is 50 units of demand here and 150 units of demand in this node. There is no demand here, so this is your pure transshipment node. But this one, notice, it's a de demand node, but at the same time it can serve, and it will serve, as a, or it might serve as a transshipment node. Because uh, these 200 units, in theory, could be shipped all the way here. There is no maximum, uh, right? The maximum here is infinity because it's not provided can be shipped all, all of it can be shipped to this node, 50 can stay here and 150 can be moved fur further on uh, to this node which actually needs 150. And then you have this, uh, this arc uh, has cost 3 and there is a lower bound 20 and upper bound 140 which means we have to ship minimum 20 on this connection and the maximum we can is 140, right? So the flow on this arc will be 
between 20 and 140 which actually effectively means that here you also have to ship at least 20 because there is no supply here and uh, another interesting thing is here we're not given lower bound or upper bound but also we're not giving the cost which means probably that uh, the cost is zero unless we forgot uh, someone forgot to put the cost in this picture so the important thing why are we talking about network flow models at this point is because um, network flow models are just a special case of linear programming models so network flow models can actually be solved as linear programming so actually they, they you could say they are a special case okay and uh, for any network flow model um, you can always formulate this linear programming model by uh, doing the following so you take xij will be your decision variable on how many units are flowing or how many units are shipped from node i to node j so for every arc that we had in the network we formulate uh, we, we put a decision variable right uh, we, what we want to decide is this one product with multiple units and multiple nodes maybe multiple supplies multiple demands how many units should flow on this particular connection on this arc ij right and then uh, the, co the objective is usually minimizing the total cost so you need to take the sum product of all the cost unit costs times all the va decision variables which represent uh, units shipped right and so this usually is a very big sum if the network is large sometimes there are uh, alternative objectives like maximizing but the standard objective is minimizing total cost and then the constraints the main constraints are just of one type this is basically two the same thing written twice uh, and uh, the format you can write them uh, uh, the standard format you can write them in is inflow to node i minus outflow from node i and then we put equal sometimes less than or equal sometimes greater than or equal bi i'll explain the signs later i want you to understand why this first so basically if you think about this constraint is for node i what do we see in node i in node i we see what well, there is a certain demand or supply depending on the sign of this or there could be zero right and there are some arcs that lead into it not always they are on the left but here for simplicity i'll put all the in flows to node i on the left so these are these are uh, decision these are arcs which have decision variables x something i right that's okay is just a symbol here to indicate another node before right uh, the, that uh, that has an an arc connecting to i and then i have some arcs which here for simplicity again i put on the right but it doesn't have to be of course uh, in every model on the right um, here I have some arcs that go that uh, take units of flow out of node i to some other node so they this other node is just indicated here as l so you see my inflow here what I mean by inflow is sum all the variables that have second index i and the first index whatever right anything else so sum over all k's x k i's and then outflow I mean sum all x i l so i means from this node to whatever else sum all the decision variables that tell you how many units you ship out of uh, out of node i to another uh, node so basically if you look at this what are we trying to do here we we basically what the, the name here says we're trying to balance the flow in node i we're trying to make sure what goes in minus goat goes out is in some relation to the supply demand in node which is represented by this symbol bi right um, and then the second constraint is uh, the just the bounds here right so this is really a more complex version of uh, 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 lower bounds in, in the simplest case remember in linear problems we have a non-negativity uh, constraint but here we have a more complex uh, gen in general format we have a more complex version which means xij has to be at least some lower value and at most some upper value and if you recall if they these uh, uh, lij and uh, uij when they were omitted in the network flow then we said um, the, the lij is zero and uij is plus infinity which brings you back to our default uh, the most common case in linear programming so now about these signs equals less than or equal or greater than or equal so the simplest case is that is is when you have total supply in the network is equal to the total demand right if i have a total of say 100 units uh, of supply in some nodes and 100 units of demand in some nodes everyone can be made happy so all the supplies can be shipped out of nodes and all the demands can be satisfied right if i have 100 cars i can deliver 100 cars to to the units which demand them right so the simplest case is we use equality so if total supply and total demand are equal t 
TS and TD, then we use equal constraints. But for all other cases, you either use your judgment or you, you try to use these simple rules. So the simple rule would be, if the total supply exceeds the total demand, right? Let's say I have a 200 cars and I, I need to deliver just 100. So really what happens is that you can, you can uh, one of the options you might have is we, we might want to satisfy all the demands but we will not use up all the supplies, right? If you want to deliver just 100 cars, you probably will take 100 cars from some supply nodes. Just you don't know which ones. It might be that we can leave it to the solver to ship the, the cheapest, right? Wherever it is the cheapest to take cars from, we'll take them, right? So in this case, you can actually write these constraints as inflow to node i minus outflow from node i greater than or equal. And you see, if this is greater, then you write greater than or equal. And then the same thing if the total supply is less. So let's say we have 50 cars and we need 100. So we might want to say, let's ship all the supplies and satisfy up to the demands, right? So deliver whatever is demanded or less. We will not be able to satisfy all demands with equalities, uh, right? Because the total supply is smaller than the total demand. In this case, uh, we write the constraints inflow minus outflow less than or equal bi. And again, less for less than or equal is an easy thing to remember. Unfortunately, in many cases, these simple um, assumptions will not hold, right? For example, I might give you a problem where I say this node should receive at most 50 cars. Th the second node should receive exactly 30. And then you have to use your judgment. You have to basically write the constraints that are appropriate in a sense that, for example, saying for, for the first node, I say deliver less than or equal demand for the second node, deliver exactly, so you put equal uh, demand. And so basically remember that in general, you have to use your judgment regarding the, the sign in the constraint. But it will always follow this format and just these equal less than or equal greater than or equal are, uh, are the subjective thing. So the subjective uh, can change from from time to time. So one thing that I want to add here is that there are certain facts that you should remember and you should use as checks for your network flow models when you write them as linear programming models. For first thing is that uh, for every arc, for every connection i to j, there will always be a decision variable x i j, right? If I have a connection um, somewhere in the network flow, I will always put a decision variable x i j for it. So if the simple thing is if I had 20 arcs in my network, I must have 20 decision variables, right? There cannot be less or more. Second thing to remember is that we need to balance flow in every, uh, every node. So th the number of constraints, the, m the large constraints, inflow minus outflow uh, related to BI, um, must be exactly equal to the number of nodes. If I have 10 nodes in the network, I need 10 constraints like this, right? I'm not counting the lower upper bounds, just the main inflow minus outflow constraints, right? So this is the things to can you can remember and you can use as, ch as checks. The second thing uh, is uh, there is this important property on network flow models that I want you to remember, is that if all parameters in the constraints, so all except cost parameters, uh, what I mean by this is demand, supply, lower and upper bounds on decision variables, if all of them are integer, then the optimal solution of the network flow model will also be integer, right? So what I mean by this is if you solve it in Excel or you solve it by the graphical method, whichever method, you, it's difficult to solve it by the graphical, but if you solve it in Excel, Excel will always give you an integer solution, okay? And there is no magic in it, there is no coincidence. It has actually been proven that for all network flow models with integer supplies, demands, lower and upper bounds, you will always have an integer optimal solution. What this means is that uh, later on when we talk about integer problems, we will talk about a constraint which is xij must be integer, we'll be adding something like this in Excel. What I want you to say, to, to what I want to say at this point is that for network flow models, you don't have to add this constraint. You get integer solution for free, right? So in fact, we could say that the integer constraint is redundant. If you add it, you're adding a constraint that will be satisfied anyway. That's the definition of redundant, right? It will be satisfied because of, of, of something else in the model. Uh, not note that we don't require costs to be, uh, to be integer. Uh, so costs can be in, uh, fractional. And uh, all we are saying is that BIs, LIJs, and UIJs need to be integer. So what I mean is that uh, the supply or demand has to be integer, and the lower bound or upper bound on the flows must be integer, right? 
Uh, one more thing is that this works only for real pure network flow models. What I mean by this is that if you suddenly add a constraint that says, um, uh, yeah, this is a network flow model, but I would like to to request that you know uh, there are some put some additional constraints that are not represented by the graphical representation of network flow. Like I would say, for example, oh, this flow must be at least 50% of another flow. These are not a network flow constraints. They will not have the same uh, standard format inflow minus outflow, right? So because of if you add a constraint like this or, or a number of constraints, you should no longer expect to have an integer optimal solution, right? Uh, such models like NALP models can have fraction, fractional optimal solutions. So basically it has to be clean network flow model with only network flow constraints in order to have integer solutions. Why this uh, actually works as it, as it does is, is because the, 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 the model has special type of constraints. The in those inflows and those outflows, it look, if you look at them, if you look for a particular variable xij, you will see that it only appears twice in the model and once it has coefficient plus one, another time it has coefficient minus one. And for such models, um, it actually uh, has been proven that all corner points of the feasible region are integer. So if you have, you know, a, a network flow model with 10 nodes, 20 uh, uh, arcs, and so 20 variables, it has been proven that if all supplies, demands, lower and upper bounds are integer, all corner points of a 20-dimensional feasible region, a simplex, um, are actually integer points. So whatever the objective is, you'll always find an integer solution. So in the f in the following uh, presentation, I'll show you examples of network flow models and uh, or problems, and then I'll show you the the network flow models and the LP formulations, and then we'll solve them in Excel.